Ooh. Um. Hmm. Something seems a little bit off with this level. That's gonna be really disconcerting if just loading this up works just fine, as it did. Uh. What? <laughs> what? How did running through the levels to get to that break that? Oh, video game bugs. Why do you exist? Is it because I was messing around in here? I'm really confused. <laughs> How? What? I can look in the debugger and see that it is the Z getting offset. But there doesn't seem to be any reason. Okay, so when I die and it restarts the level, it starts it properly. How strange. How bizarre. How bizarre. I wonder if it's colliding with a body left over from the previous level that hasn't gotten cleaned up yet. So like, the first frame it tries to move, the old level is still in the physics world? So it collides with that and it shifts the character over. That would make sense as to why it only happens transitioning between levels. I have a feeling this is what the case is. So let's go down into here. First thing we collide with and see what that is. Collision info, kinematic collision collider is start level three, small platform 13. Yeah, it's colliding with something in the previous level. Let me see what the load level of logic does. Maybe it's freeing it but not removing it from the tree immediately. Okay, clearing the player, clearing the triggers. Ah. We're queuing it to free, but we're not actually removing it from the tree. Yeah. I'll do that for the reload as well. All right, so remove it, queue it for free, and then we add it. That might be what our bug was caused by. So let's see if the problem persists now that we remove the level from the tree. Hey, there we go. There we go. Cool. All right, another great mystery solved. Oops, and a new bug introduced, naturally. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, why did it, why did it happen twice? Eh, what? But then it happened three times. Why, why are we getting bonus particles here? I think it's because we are outside of the bounding box. So here, that bounding box is still visible, but I think when we die way over here, the camera pans over and it doesn't finish emitting the particles and then we get a little bit closer and then it emits some more. <laughs> it does get a little weird when the character moves away. <laughs> it's like you left a little something behind there. There we go. That actually looks like the character's dissolving. So that's it. 76 FPS. Does it go down when I maximize? It goes up? What? More pixels equals more frame rate? And now it's at 212. Um. Okay. I don't know why maximizing and restoring the window made my frame rate go from 70 to 200. <laughs> <laughs> when am I gonna take text editor seriously? Well, I'm I'm using the best of the best. I've got MS Paint. I've got Notepad. What do you want? I mean, there wasn't a game engine that came installed on Windows, so I guess I had to use Godot. <laughs> the is that in radians or it's probably radians. I don't actually know what a good angle is for this. Well, let me just try some value in there and see what happens. Okay, so the camera's definitely looking up. Things are looking up for me now. That's a little bit too much. Yeah, I don't think I like the camera angle change. Like some aspects of it I do like where it keeps the silhouette really strong and I can have thicker 3D objects and not lose the character, but it's kind of disorienting when the camera just kind of like swings back and forth. It's kind of nauseating. <laughs> But I feel like there might be something there. That's why I'm not hitting that. <laughs> Holy smokes! Hee-haw! Well, that's an interesting um, super jump right there. That's that's not. <laughs> not quite. 
how I intended that to work. How is it getting that much momentum? Is that just the speed of the the punch? Surely not. I'm trying to figure out how it's even doing that because it shouldn't be getting that kind of velocity. Oh, wait a second. Maybe that's applying every frame. It is applying every frame. Interesting. Okay, that makes a little more sense. Basically, every frame that you're punching, it sets your X velocity to the punch speed if it's less than that. So what's happening is if you're up against a slope and then you punch, it's gonna set your velocity and then it's gonna redirect some of it upward up the slope. So you start sliding up the slope. The next frame, it's gonna set it again and then it's gonna redirect some of it up and so on. But the problem is that's gonna be very frame rate dependent. <laughs> Because if I go into the settings and turn on VSync, I don't think I'll jump nearly as high. Yeah. So that can't really be a feature because then it's going to be frame rate dependent. So now we need the D pad stuff and the joysticky stuff. The joysticky stuff sounds really disgusting when I say it like that. <laughs> That's not something you want on your screen, especially when you're streaming. I was just working on controller mappings and I got joysticky stuff all over the place. So there's a scan code for key escape. I wonder if there's a scan code. Where's that defined? Global scope, key escape, joy button. Oh, ha! <laughs> that was in there all along. Joy start. Okay, I don't need my own constants. That already exists. Silly me. The window cracks don't look natural because there's not like anything lightening them up. It just looks like somebody pasted a dark silhouette on the window. Part of the problem might be that we're going too dark. Let's dial things back a little bit and see if it looks any better. Because you kind of expect to see stuff inside the windows. Multiple Sclerosis Association of America. That's not quite the MSAA I was looking for. Of course, that would move the other direction. Because the UV... If I want the texture to scroll left, I need the UVs to go right. <laughs> So it's kind of backward from what I'm thinking. I don't understand why it's reflecting down below there, but we could make it at least not reflect on itself. So if we take this mesh and in the view instance, we set it to a different layer like that. And then we take these and we take that out of the coal mask on all of them. Wait, no, sorry. Take that out of the coal mask, my bad. We want this one. That's got all the buildings and stuff in it. Then it'll at least get rid of the blackness. And that is a workaround for now. You like my quality uh, mouse and MS Paint drawings here? Just throwing out some ideas. Of course, my plan was to start simple, and then the gears started turning, and I was like, but I could do this, and I could do that, and that would make a lot more work for me, but it would look cooler, and give the effect that these are like 3D meshes. Hmm, 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 hmm. I could take the world coordinates of the vertex, like I've got this vertex here, and then offset it by some amount, get the new world position, and then multiply that position by the camera matrix, I think, and then take whatever the local space difference is and add that to the UVs. <laughs> But my matrix math is not super great, so I'm not 100% sure that's correct. It's progress, I guess. It's a thing. Things are happening. Strange things are happening. Not what I would expect, though. It's like that ratio gets... Oh, right, that ratio is going to get near infinite here when it's right near the edge of the screen. Actually, that should be minus, right? Yeah, well, that's still not right. <laughs> I don't know what we did, but we didn't do the correct thing. Or maybe it just needs to be scaled down more. Because that got scaled by some height scale. So maybe if we did like something like that. <gasps> Look at that. I think that did it. Hang on. Let's scale it up just a little bit more. Okay, let's not scale it up quite that much. So now it looks like there's two trees there. Got a little bit of wrap around. It's like you can see it there, but it's pretty subtle. Could do a third pass with like the blue channel, but I don't know that it would be any more noticeable. But this parallax thing is, it's just so subtle. Even when I set the value pretty high, like you can kind of notice it up at the very top, but for the most part, I don't really even see it. And I put it in there. Well, that's kind of what the point of this test was before I start going too crazy on making tree textures. I want to see like, do I try doing this? Is it even worth the effort? And I think the answer is no. Like it's possible that if I actually spent the time and made decent tree art, you might notice. But honestly, it looks so subtle. Even I'm like staring right at it looking for it and they just look like flat billboards. See, that actually starts becoming more visible. 
So that actually kind of looks 3D, doesn't it? Maybe two is just not quite enough to create the illusion, but with three, it gives enough points to make them all look 3D. So now, see that almost looks 3D. The color's so thick. A full tech, hey! Thanks for the raid! Shoot! I was just gonna wrap the stream up, but now that I've been raided, I guess I gotta do some more. If I switch all the way over to the side, you can see I've just got multiple planes of textures. So I've got this tree, and each color is uh, basically a different layer. Mustache guy, mustache guy. All right, we've got votes for mustache guy. All right, we're raiding mustache guy. Just in one direction? What? Oh, what? Holy smokes! I'm getting raided. Wow. Am I like the only person streaming game development tonight? <laughs> What's up? Well, our trees are swaying, but they're upside down. <laughs> oh, okay. I see. So it's all funky if you're looking at it from the wrong axis or if it's flipped around. I guess that makes sense. It means I can't take the same tree and then flip it around or my UVs will be all busted. I guess the parallax is going the opposite direction. That is boogered but it's got the correct tree on the left like this is the left side of the texture so <laughs> I'm really confused as to what's going on here this is why game development takes so long you just get in here and it's like this was working perfectly fine let me just create a new mesh for it and then five hours later you can't figure out why your parallax is all broken yeah if I rotate it 180 and look at it from the other side it's okay which makes me think that the UVs are scaled backward and it's rotated 180 degrees so I swear I've already gone through this where I do S X negative one R Z 180 save export reopen it make sure it's imported because sometimes it doesn't update create a new inherited set the material yeah it's all goobered up why I don't understand how how does that how does that happen wait a minute wait a minute oh shoot oh shoot oh I changed the shader. I negated the thing in the shader when I was trying to fix the other issue, and then I rotated it in Blender and still kept the old shader values. Ka! <laughs> yeah, see, this is this is backward on this one now, too. These should be in the front. Whoops! Because I was just testing out multiplying it by a negative value to see what it did. It didn't fix it. Ugh, yikes. This is still not right. This is still broken. I'm so confused. Why? Maybe I didn't need to scale X. Maybe I need to scale Z or Y. Why does it need a video for how to flip normals? A two and a half minute Hello, video. Welcome to my 13th Blender video. Let's like all face on cube. Put the W and flip normals. Hand under. Ah, there we go. That's what I needed. You could have just had like a piece of text that says press W and then hit flip normals. W flip normals. That's that's all I needed. That's all I needed. Two seconds. Let's load this material again. It flipped the texture. Ah, the UVs are flipped. <gasps> it's a miracle! Wait, is that right? That's right, right? Please tell me that's right. That seems right. Goodness gracious! <laughs> oh boy! That was a lot of work. Just, I could have just pressed W and flipped normals. Okay, adding that to my Blender notes. We can actually set all of our UV coordinates to be as though they did not have the parallax. And now you've got pretty flat looking trees. 